it's, it's good to warn me as the time comes. Thank you. Um, I was asked to give a state of play statement about the state of play of research in this area. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that, uh, but still, so I'll make some comments and I'll talk about the impact of disasters in, in Australia. And that's based on some recent work we've done, uh, we're in the middle of doing. So I stress it's about doing and making critical comments about it sitting in front of me. So. Uh, and we haven't taken all your comments on board yet, I'm sorry, there's too many things. Uh, so it's, a, it's tentative, it's tentative stuff. I thought it would be good to start by reminding ourselves of, of why we want to adapt. And this was taken from a document that's referred to in the current, in the current Victorian State Adaptation Plan. Um, I think it's the only actual bit of empirical material in there, but that's probably... I forget we've been recorded. <laughs> so, I think the next one will have more in it, I'm sure. Uh, it's just worth uh, remembering that uh, the projections were not very, uh, a, a pretty, a, a th things we want to avoid. And they're all about uh, things that emergency managers, rightly or wrongly, are held responsible for. So uh, I've just picked up two there. The heat wave, we've talked about heat wave, uh, and Craig has made quite a, a big thing of it, and I'm going to make more of it actually and reinforce what you said earlier. And uh, the bushfires, but that's only with respect to the timber industry. So the point is, uh, it looks bad. This is very conservative. I think now we would, we'd use a different scenario because it's very conservative scenarios, and, and we've, we've just seen we're exceeding them. So uh, maybe it's useful to think, well, if this is what we want to, this is a, not the worst case, but this is where we're heading, we want to be below that. I think we'd, we'd all agree. We want to be below. So. A comment on the state of play. Uh, people uh, in this room might be aware, might not be aware, that uh, of this body called NCAF, still exists, National Climate Change Adaptation Research Facility, based at Griffith University. It still exists, but it's not working in this area anymore, I think. Uh, but for a while, they uh, ran a network that I, I coordinated on emergency management and climate change adaptation for quite a few years, and among other things, it produced the National Climate Change Adaptation Research Plan for emergency management, specifically for emergency management. That was a, not just done by a group of strange researchers. It was very much led by the, the sector. Tony Pierce actually chaired it yep, and uh, chaired the group. And I think it's um, for, in a way, and it funded research. It was used to guide um, the allocation of research funds from NCAR for, for a few years. So it's all on their website, actually. There's a lot of work there. And the other thing that NCARF did and the network did was to produce a policy brief, again, very much with, with uh, users. That, these things were, that was done in Melbourne, so of course it has a nice Victorian flavour, um, and although it's national. And again, it's on, it's on the website. It's, just, it's uh, probably quite a useful resource, given that it came largely from, this, from the industry. And it directly addresses our topic. Of course, what happened to these? Well, NCAF uh, was actually a creature of John Howard, although when you look at all the comments on the web, it's interesting. Most people seem to imagine it was a Labor thing. It, Labor did not refund it for whatever good reason, but uh, it, it received extra funding last year and now it's very much focused on coastal zone stuff. So it didn't refund anything in emergency management, which I find ironic as almost personal view, and apologies if I offend anybody. I think almost all its work could fall with, except on ecosystems, could fall within the ambit of what we would all call disaster risk reduction, or broadly, broad concept of emergency management. We had Vicar in Victoria, which again is not being funded at the moment, but it produced a lot of material. All this material from both these organisations is accessible and is, much of it is directly relevant and, and in fact comes from the concerns of, of the sector. So. Uh, to, oh, I just thought it's, it's a very crowded area. Once I, I took seriously this idea, what's the state of play in research? So I thought, well, apart from what I know about, which I've just talked about, I thought I'd go and improve my mind. And it's, it's overwhelming. I think five or six years ago I could have made a statement about it. Now I don't think it's possible. Um, and, and it's not just the research, it's, uh, it's all the, the to endless tools, in, including in our sector, very specific things, as well as everyone seems to have um, strategies plans, briefs, and so on. Uh, just, you, you just go out of the net, you, put, you see there's this probably thousands of them. So 
What does that mean? Well, after a bit of, uh, did a bit of uh, thinking about this and, uh, and review, and I think there, there are a number of themes in the research area. I can't say where it's going or anything, but there are a number of things. And some of these are directly related or relevant for emergency management. I picked out these first four. There's a general, most people that I speak to and uh, seem very concerned about, well, how do we know how we're going? How, how can we measure our progress or lack of progress in adaptation, but also in emergency management? In, in, in the context of dealing with climate disasters. And people want to do that, and a lot of funding has gone into that, as far as I can see, various formula and everything else. So we'll, we'll have a go at that in a minute. And re, I think very importantly for emergency management is this whole area, why people or sectors, some sectors are adapting. We've heard a little while ago about some of the agricultural sectors, but some are not. Some are resisting it hugely. Uh, and the problem for emergency management in, well, one, one take on it is that uh, if people don't adapt uh, and then there's a problem, emergency management ends up carrying that problem and there's an inquiry. At, in, as far as I, so far, it's only focused on emergency managers, even though they might have nothing to do with creating the problem and might have fought against it. And then there's allocation of blame in the media or whatever, even if it's not part of the inquiry.